you know, with an entertainment franchise that's a quarter of a century long, there are going to be some choice moments that are truly memorable and engaging. So when it comes to Tomb Raider, here are my personal top 10 favourite moments from the series. Tomb Raider Legend was the first Tomb Raider to not feature classic Lara. When Legend came out, Lara's personality, her backstory and the way she carried herself received a complete overhaul. She might look kind of similar to classic Lara, but her character was unrecognisably different. She was now rather soft, warmly spoken, delicate and emotionally expressive in cinematics. Now she was voiced by Keely Hawes, who's a great actress, just miscast, giving Lara an ill-fittingly sweet, almost motherly and calm tone. What makes this moment so great is that she briefly snaps out of that and completely flips and loses her cool. All these years I blamed myself and it was you! You killed her! Killed her? She's not dead! She went where I was supposed to go, where you could have gone! Make sense right this second or I swear I'll execute you where you stand! I told you to pull out the sword, I told you! Where is my mother? Avalon! It's not a myth, don't you get it? You'll never understand. I'm wasting my breath. She demonstrates a steely coldness in her demeanor and addresses Amanda with a fierce determination. You can feel her simmering with rage and it's incredible. From this moment, your every breath is a gift from me. For only having 4 weapon types in Rise of the Tomb Raider, you do get a lot of options, as each weapon has a secondary mode of fire. Fighting ferocious, deadly animals was always a staple in Tomb Raider, so being able to fight the most vicious of the vicious of them with your range of weaponry, dodge countering its merciless attacks, stunning it with poison or flame, and harvesting its unique resources promote the strengthening of Lara, amplifying their sense of empowerment which is so very gratifying. Confronting Zolote at the end of Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light is pure arcadey carnage, paired with bombastically charged music. It is very un Tomb Raider, but damn, it is fun. I'm happy to see Lara exit Indiana Jones territory and enter James Bond territory sometimes. This is one of those times, as long as level design remains formulaically faithful to the series. Here you have a high octane infiltration escape sequence set in a New York skyscraper weapons laboratory. You solve a puzzle to execute a trap to poison an android holding the exit key while evading an encircling helicopter turret gun, all of which never deviates from the traditional Tomb Raider level design formula. It comes together as an expertly crafted energetic experience. Not often do we see Lara disadvantaged, so when we do, it's a unique dynamic, made even more unique here by the fact that the Cabal are after both Lara and Curtis, so Lara is targeted by both parties. Curtis uses this as an opportunity to play Lara, as she's on the back foot here, to stall the Cabal's chase of him. This is a situation we've never seen Lara put in before, because earlier he had disarmed her of her weapons, and not a single word is exchanged between the two of them either. 
couple that setup with its European influenced filmic presentation and London Symphony orchestrated score, and this becomes one of the most cinematically engrossing scenes in the entire series. Ah! Climbing the Great Pyramid in Giza is about the most Tomb Raider thing you can do. It's nothing but pure terrain risk assessment and the apprehension of making that leap of faith multiple times while remaining alert to deadly falling rocks, all wrapped up in a foreboding atmosphere of isolation. joking right we're taking this with us this is ours you're not walking out of here with that box i know this film has a bad rap but i have a lot of love for it i even reviewed it in a positive light and one of its strengths is the ending and no not because it signifies the film has ended but because of how deviant it is from traditional cinematic endings lara's ally terry sheridan wants to take Pandora's box, but Lara knows she can't let that come to pass. Throughout the film, we see them rebuild a fondness for each other, and we enjoy Lara's charismatic, charming and fierce screen presence. So when he manages to emotionally break her down somewhat, it's emotionally affecting because you like her character. So it's come to this, has it? Well, you do have authorization to kill me. Better do it then. Because if you think standing in front of me is going to be enough... <coughs> you don't have it in you to stop me. <coughs> See, all your beliefs... All your ideals... They're not real. I am. And you've loved me. I don't know how strong you think you are, but you are not going to choose them over me. No move. No. Thank. There's that moment where for a second, you don't know whether Lara's actually just been shot, but of course she hasn't. After she's just done what she's had to do, she has a moment of fragility, where even Lara is lured by the temptation of Pandora's box, weakened by the impact of what just came before. But I appreciate the delicacy and screenplay, which Alan Silvestri's score enhances terrifically.
This particular level should be the definitive blueprint for all Tomb Raider levels. You have multiple challenge rooms, offshooting a central waterfall lake which you consistently return to from different angles, giving the level so much ingeniously complex depth and scope. You frequently wonder, what's behind that door? And you get that question answered as you unravel the layers of the temple, where your reward for progress is finally discovering what's behind this or that marvelously curious gateway. I'm stretching the definition of the word moment here, but multiple times do you get that moment of reward, so I'm combining them into this one entry. Sanctuary of the Skion was already a memorable level, aesthetically and atmospherically. You spend a fair amount of time gathering two Ankh keys to open this small, unassuming door in the chest of a giant sphinx you just climbed to the top of. Inside the door? A small hole leading down a deep, narrow shaft. It's so humble, which only enriches the magnificence of the reveal of this stunning underground emerald lake featuring two huge jackal statues submerged underwater. Your immediate entrance into this area is a harsh, long drop as Lara screams. You think you're in danger, but that shock is suddenly absorbed by landing in the water and by the comforting grace of its accompanying score. Tomb Raider 1 again, taking the top two spots, this one is for a similar reason as the last. You spend so much of Palace Midas exploring this intricately crafted level, there was always this one room that seemed pointless, where I really had to try and let go of finding out what the hell it had to offer because I couldn't figure it out. This anticipation meant that later in the level, when you approach this same room but from a top this time, you get that sensation when you look down of... Oh, I was down there before, but now I'm up here. It's that realisation combined with being hit with Tomb Raider 1's hauntingly beautiful music, the same track as the last spots actually, that really took my breath away and just left me awe stricken at the grandiose majesty. No pretentious lines of dialogue from Lara, no brief control or camera restrictions to break you out the immersion as modern games try to do, it's just you, your discovery and that music, pure immersion. Hopefully more to come. This is Reason Choice, thanks for watching.